This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 670. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm not mad, Mike. There it is. There is no... Oh, God. These titles titles are going nuts. Uh, but it is time to talk pro wrestling. First of us, for, first with us from Beacon, New York. He's the only uh, Mayhemer with a future endeavor letter from the WWE. He is mad. Mike? Just an hour and a half north of Carnegie Hall. Sorg. No, don't. Nope, nope. Where nope. we go to the park and eat. <laughs> oh, jeez. You know, for such a Pittsburgh fan with your terrible towel, you you have so many problems with our little eating. It's park not my there. fault. Eaton Park uses incorrect incorrect jeez. grammar. Jeez. Anyways, Sequence with us, of events count Sorg. With with <laughs> with us. Hey, they have a drive through, so now you can eat and park. Nope. No, you still can't. <laughs> Also with us is uh, drive. manager to the stars, BC Steel. Yes. And if if uh, Eaton Park is the worst thing that you pick up from the lack of Pittsburgh grammar, syntax, and English, it's a good day. It's a good day. I mean, there's a lot. If that's what we're hung up on, yes. that in the pronunciation of Carnegie, PA. Carnegie. Mm-hmm. There you go. BC, it's been a while. Uh, it has been a while. I have been out and about. Uh, just saw in the chat, I will not be bringing back the ponytail. I cannot do that. Nope. Uh, hereditary and, and science has unfortunately <laughs> robbed me of that. Uh, yeah, I've been out and about. Uh, just uh, made a shocking return and uh, That's right. still doing Rise. Got a lot to talk about. Excited to be here. It's been a while since I've been had, so Fantastic. let's do it. It'll be good to catch up with you. And of course, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You guys can catch up with us, up with us every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Facebook Live. And of course, we're streaming on a few other platforms. But if you want to be part of the chat and uh, and ask questions about ponytails and other hairstyles, you can be on that Facebook uh, chat for that. And uh, also, uh, check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com where you can find links, subscribe to us in podcast and video form, and look us up on your favorite platform for podcasts. You can also ask your Google Home and your Amazon Echo to play uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show on TuneIn or Google Podcasts or whatever you have your device set up to do. You can also drop us an email at that email address. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show. And, of course, join us on the Facebook page and Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. A lot of great discussions are happening over there. That's how you guys are. are every time I was like, oh, I didn't see such and such video. And Tina's in the chat saying, well, you better catch up on your own group. And, and then I go read the group and watch videos that you guys are posting. So I know what's going on for the show. Anyways, um, <laughs> when's Chris LaRusso coming on? They're, they're, just, they're interested in just everybody but CBC Steel. <laughs> okay, first of all, Marcus Mann is a stupid jerk face. I yes. I no longer do business with Chris LaRusso, and you're getting pretty much the steak of Pittsburgh Indie Wrestling. Whoa! So don't worry about the potato and the parsley and the salad and the soup. You're getting the steak. You're getting the sizzle. You're getting the taste. You're getting the, the main event. Not the main event, but the, the main event. The main event, yes. not the main event, yes. not the Duke, Dan That's Duke true. Davis and Gideon Jones. Yes, yeah. I do enjoy the main event. Yeah, I mean, and the main event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrestle and flow, flow, flow. Uh, anyways, uh, also thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash wrestling name show where you guys are supporting the show, including our fans at the fan of the show $1 level. Bo Diggity! Woo! Ed Burke, Bobby of J-Town. Tina Keys and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment and our friends at Team Hammer Fist. Also at the Pocky Club $5 level, Bradley, Ruthers, Doc Remedy, Dave Potter, Kyle Turner, and Daniel Towery. Those guys and everybody above are getting some special after darks. We're having some more deeper interviews with our guests. We uh, went on for a while with The Rev last week about awkward moments in wrestling and twerking with Teddy Long. Uh, also at the Pete's Club uh, $10 level, our friend Ryan Clark at $13. And the manager $20 level is our friends at Occupy 
pro wrestling you guys can support the show too get some extra content at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show so i was trying to find a good story a, ha- a happy story before we go into a bad story but i can't think of one but Matt hardy's gonna have another kid sorg oh good oh good yeah. another vessel whoa what okay no another that's that's odd... another vessel for that's that's an odd phrasing a king what i got you i knew what you meant you know what i know what you mean but it's still odd phrasing yeah well i mean he is it's a vessel nuclear vessel i got it what (laughs) yeah um i don't remember that accent but anyways um so the biggest news going around is uh apparently uh fan interaction is a big thing this week um improper fan interaction uh guys wrestling fans are terrible hey (laughs) (laughs) wow i'm surprised somebody said it before i did god bless you mad mike (laughs) Hey, hey, we smell our own. I am, am a wrestling fan. I am terrible. <laughs> okay, sometimes wrestling. For evidence, listen to any raw rap up. <laughs> yeah, okay, not not untrue. Um, so first of all, there was a video going around of um, it, was it? Uh, uh, I know the, I know the name. Last name was Fatu. Uh, one one of the Samoans. Um, apparently a fan uh, uh went beyond the barricade and he just laid him out. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I guess this is our, this is our PSA moment of the show a little bit. <laughs> yes, about fan interaction. Um, Trainers, EMTs, referees down. Yes, yes. I mean, if 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 you cross the barricade, like you are, uh, remember the guy that ran in uh, in and decked Bret Hart. Yes, at the uh, Hall of Fame, and everybody's like, "Oh, they they roughed them up too much, and they're taking pot hats." Look, no, no, that's no, what happens. No, 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 that he well deserved. When it happened, uh, there's a story that Jim Cornette tells that it happened in Mid South, mm-hmm. and they drag the guy back, and Bill Watts goes, "Ah, you like to beat up wrestlers, do you?" Great Bill Watts impression, by the way. Mm-hmm. He goes, "Ah, you like to beat up wrestlers," and they just tore him to shreds. He actually was like the the son of a, a deputy or something, so oh, they really? got in trouble for it, but. But yeah, the, this guy thought it would be great to do this, and he learned that you don't do that. Mm. So there, there is definitely a uh, a line not to cross. But thankfully, with with the internet and YouTube, you can see people that have, and it does not go well at all. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of those cautionary tales out there, including this guy that just got decked. Um, and I mean, we, I mean, hell, sometimes you're not safe at at at. at I know there was a video of Buck Nasty. <laughs> Well, that just came around, and, and uh, but from not too long ago either. I think uh, from like December, January. No, this like was that. it's when I was Recent. with him. So this was oh, it was a while back. Yeah, this was at least a year. I would say eighteen months ago, roughly. Yeah. And uh, the guy was had his big boy pants on and and ran his mouth and and just was uh, thankfully played smart and uh, did not take it to a certain level because it would not have gone well for him. Yeah, yeah. So, um. So, uh, uh, Potter is in the in the, uh, ah. and he says, "Hey, BC, why don't you share the time that you had a fan come into the ring in Cleveland?" I I I was thinking of that. I was trying to remember the the, the story of it. So, it was my first time working for Cleveland All Pro Wrestling, mm-hmm. uh, ran by the late great JT Lightning. Uh, I'd worked with JT before. I was, I think, three years in. So I was intimidated by my own shadow. Mm-hmm. And JT had come up to me. He said, uh, "You know, Potter said that." You're a good ref. Potter said, you know what you're doing. I just have two rules. Don't disrespect my company. Don't let anybody get in the ring. I said, no problem. And I laughed. And he goes, no, I'm serious. I'll kill you if they get in the ring. (laughs) And I went, oh, God, I'm going to mess my pants. But I'm like, nobody's going to get in the ring. Everything's going good. Potter, let me do the main event. Thank you. And uh, (laughs) it was Arrow and Fabulous, now known as John McChesney, taking on. He went went by just Fabulous? Yes, he was just Fabulous at one point. And Arrow taking on uh, Bouncer and Sheikh Abdul Hassan. So all four gentlemen are in the ring, and Hank is making an announcement. And some guy comes up and says, tell Hank. This guy smelled like failure and ass. Um, He had been drinking quite a bit. So I said to Hank, I said, Hank, this fan told me to tell you to announce something. Hank told me to tell the fan to do something that was he was not going to say on the mic. So I told the guy, I said, you got to go back. It's, It's done. You know, whatever. He then proceeds to come up to the ring again, and Shiki and Bouncer invite him into the ring. Now, in my head, I'm like, okay, I know what JT said, but this guy's not going to get in the ring. (laughs) He got in the ring. (laughs) And in typical worst thing I could have done fashion, I held the baby faces back because, you know, why wouldn't you? 
And they, the Sheikh Abdul Hassan and Bouncer proceeded to destroy this guy. Mm -hmm. I look and I see JT who was doing the music and he hops over a barrier that is about 10 feet high. He had just had knee surgery. He lands, dives in the ring, starts pounding the guy and then cuts a promo. And it was, uh, uh, profanity laden, but basically challenged the guy and said, if he wanted to do it again, he was more than welcome. The guy's friends got him thankfully gone. And I believe they left match went off without a hitch. Um, fast forward to the end of the story. I went up to JT. I said, you know, any questions or any comments, any, any advice, anything like that? He goes, what did I tell you? And I go, Oh no, you said, don't let anybody get in the ring. And he goes, what if that guy would have hurt somebody? I'm like, uh, you know, I, I was wrong. He goes, what did I tell you? And I go, you told me, me not to let anybody get in the ring and I'm shaking. I've turned white. I'm like, this is, I'm going to die in the flats in Cleveland. He goes, and he gets real close, like this close to my face and says, Hey, next time. Fuck him up. You did a great job. Thank you so much. And I'm like, Oh, Oh God. He goes, no, I'm just messing with you. Like, it's okay. And I'm like, okay. Potter goes, what's wrong? I'm like, I need uh, to change my pants and then we need to go because I think I just had an issue. But yeah, the guy thought it was a good idea to try and charge the ring. And it, it, did not go well. And mm -hmm. I've seen that about five or six times. Always entertaining. So usually alcohol induced. Yes. I had a I've had I had one fan chase me because I told him that the wife beater was appropriate because I'm sure that that's something he's experienced with, wife beating. This person did not like that very well. Uh, he told me his son was with him. I asked him if it was his. He then <laughs> proceeded <laughs> Jesus. He then proceeded to chase me around the ring. Uh, and this gentleman was very fast and, and I went up to security who did absolutely nothing and I cut a promo on them and then they took him off and I will uh, shout out to Potter again because Potter was waiting for him to come back around so Potter could cold talk him like uh, Dash Water did to the guy who attacked Bret Hart. So mm -hmm. yeah, those things happen. And final story with that, I once saw somebody attempt to attack Shane Taylor, which never goes well. <laughs> oh, that's wait, wait, was that the a, one in Clearfield? No, no, no. This was in McKeesport. And okay. the gentleman uh, said something to Shane Taylor that you do not want to say to Shane Taylor. Right. And uh, this gentleman used this word, and Shane very calmly invited him. Uh, somebody had spit in his direction, and then yeah. all hell broke loose. It was Marcus Mann, Peyton Graham, and Chris LaRusso attempting to hold him back. Oh, jeez. Uh, they sort of did. I just walked off because I didn't want to be a part of that. But, um, yeah, that was not a... I don't know if that was just bad decision-making or alcohol or just a death wish and a fun way to go. I don't know what it was, but yeah, it did yeah. not go well. So I was, I was part, I was, I filmed one in Clearfield where I believe uh, Shane was seconding J-Rock. Okay. And a woman, I, I've told this story on the show, I'm sure before, uh, I, I, I keep an eye out cause there'll be a Clearfield uh, cataclysm too. Um, uh, coming out on on YouTube, and that that will be part of it, I believe. Yes. Um, and it's it's and it's just like one hard cam for the show for whatever reason. Um, and the J Rock goes to grab a chair because I think he was fighting Jimmy DeMarco from this woman in the front row, and no barricades or anything. Um, and she refuses to get, let him have it. Right. So he, you know, he gives up on it, not going to fight with the fan. Turns around to you know go after Jimmy or something, and uh, the the lady picks up a chair and the most ginger uh, uh, chair shot to the back of J rock. And you know, she was kind of trying. Um, and also in the same match, some old guy did get it in Shane Taylor's face and then came over to me and said, that was awesome. I can't wait to see the video. And I'm just like, you don't realize you almost died. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Thou shalt not mess with Shane Taylor. No, no, you should not. You should not. Well, uh, this all is the precursor to the other thing that happened this week in fan interaction. Uh, there's a gift. Uh, Scarlett Bordeaux, who has been on Impact Wrestling, which apparently was just released today. Yes. Uh, from the sounds of it. Uh, so uh, there was an incident in Mexico where she was in the middle of a match and apparently just co got completely groped by a fan at ringside. Yeah, the guy held her arms back and then grabbed her stomach. It was really, really creepy. Yeah, she was kind of like selling back to the barricade from, you know, fighting with whoever. And, and he just like kind of grabbed and hugged and looked like he was going to take her home. Yes, uh, I'm guessing that is the second woman that he's ever touched in his life. And the first one is because he had come out of one. So yes. this gentleman looked very, very odd. And I think it goes without saying no mm -hmm. bad touch. Yes. So uh, like, good. It, it, it's just, it's just terrible. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And the reactions I've been reading online are even worse. Like, oh, oh yeah. well, that's how she dresses. I'm like, it doesn't matter. She could be wrestling naked, and you're still not allowed to do that. Yeah. 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 It's it, it's funny like, because social media will show the worst of human beings. Mm-hmm. And, and some people, I'm sure, trolling. And I saw it on Reddit, too. And somebody said, you know, in fairness, the way she was dressed, and I just went, no, 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 no. No, a thousand times no. Mm. Like it, it just blows my mind that people don't get that what somebody does has no justification in how you react. Mm-hmm. Um, that it's just it's it's just so creepy, and I know creepy, but at least I mean you're like the, you're like the the purveyor of creepy. Yes, I, yeah. I am. I am the 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 uh, creep master sultan. general, the sultan, the, the sultan of creepy. Yes, the sultan of creepy. Uh, official designation, by the way, but <laughs> Mecca-leka, well, Mecca Leka, hi to you, uh, Mecca Heine, Heine Ho. And there's a thing that uh, was sent to me once, and it said, Would you feel comfortable if Dwayne the Rock Johnson did this to you? If your answer is no, as a man, you do not do that to somebody else. What if so Ryan, that's the level. What if Ryan Reynolds did it to you? Oh, if Ryan, Ryan Reynolds could do whatever he wanted to me, well, there's I mean, I, I would like to hang out with him, I would like <laughs> yeah, to get to know him first, but I mean, absolutely, yeah. But again, you don't touch. Uh, you know, like, as Alex is saying, uh, you don't touch professionals for any sport team. Saying, uh, "Good on Lady Shawnee," I think her name was, uh, for looking out for her and, and pulling her away. When and I guess Scarlett didn't even know. I mean, entirely what was happening until she saw you, the footage. You don't even have to limit this to professionals. No, you don't touch anybody without, you know, permission. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. that's that he hit the note right on the head. It's not like, just like related it's to not wrestling. professionals. It's not amateurs. It's don't touch people unless you know they're okay with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Having spent, and, oh, sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, 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 no. no that's, that's that's it. I was gonna say, having spent a lot of time in bars and clubs in my twenties, there was a lot of stuff that it's one of those things. If there would have been camera phones, God, I'm dating myself. If there would have been camera phones, then there was a lot of stuff that's like no bad. Like she clearly There's does not want. There's still a lot of stuff that's like that in bars well, and clubs. That's a good point. I, yeah, I'm yeah. not in the the club scene uh, much anymore. I can't really. Oh, I'm not either. Down. I just I'm just assuming because oh, I would men imagine are mostly there are. terrible. They're just they're just all it's all in Snapchat now. Yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's true. I always think of doing something. What would your mother think, or would you <laughs> want that done to your mother? Ser- oh. I mean, seriously, like. If you're going to hug somebody and be creepy, would you want somebody to do that to your mom or girlfriend or sister or whoever else? Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's some people like, I'd like or it done to my sister. would you want to see one stranger do that to another random stranger? Like, you don't even need to equate it to people you know personally. Like, if you saw, if you saw a random dude go up behind a woman on the street and hug her from behind around the waist, mm-hmm. and she did not look pleased... What would you think about that? Yes, <laughs> I'm. I mean, it's it's a good point. Oh, and can we just say stop sending your stuff unwanted? Nobody ever wanted to see that ever. As a man, nobody ever wants. Uh, I'm going to be a little blue. Nobody ever wants to see a penis ever, mm. ever. Uh, man, <laughs> woman, no matter your sexual orientation, nobody ever wants to see one. So um, don't I, show. I will everybody. make. I will make one exception. Go on. And this is no. This is very. This is very specific. Uh, something I tell all my female friends, if they ever receive an unsolicited dick pic, you are more than welcome to search penis on the internet and send them one right back. <laughs> That's <laughs> actually a good idea. Yep. I, I, I've been I've been told. Send them a bouquet. If you search bouquet <laughs> of, of oh, that, yeah. it will come up and you can send it to people. Um, and now people are. Probably searching that now. Uh, You're so, welcome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry if you just pulled over and searched that. Um, anyways, Bouquet well, of peanuts. Let's bring it. <laughs> <laughs> Not the show title. Listen, we weren't we weren't allowed to use table of vagina <laughs> last show. <laughs> I literally put Wait, that yeah, for Missy, Missy to write down as a show title. Producer Missy just said, "How did you know I just wrote that down as a show title?" Um, Missy, it's because we tell it sometimes. All right, let's talk about uh, one thing uh, uncom- uncomfortable to something else that's uncomfortable. Let's talk about Fight Society. Uh, our friends uh, over at uh, Fight Society have a new release this week. Of course, uh, over on Indie Wrestling 
dot us you can go check it out a uh, new show episode 31 and 32 which uh bc steel actually shows up on some of these here yes uh coming up here yes. so uh of course matched with a, a lot of friends of the show uh dean radford brohemoth and shirley doe uh, that we're seeing if you guys are joining us on the footage on a live stream right now um but uh go check it out um but uh um, absolutely go go check that out over there indywrestling.us a lot of releases including rise with a y rwa is coming up um a lot of great stuff going on here in the pittsburgh area and stay tuned because a lot of cool stuff is going to be happening uh, live and on facebook and and as we uh, have some really cool stuff going on with our partners in independent professional wrestling in the pittsburgh area and beyond so go check that out and supporting our friends over in indie wrestling so and with that hey bc steel it's been uh i say it's been a while since we've had you on you've been kind of around to a bunch of different places uh and and again like we said kind of popped up in fight society this past week too yeah the first time in about four years yeah uh to the shock of i would say a lot of people especially (laughs) when i walked into the locker room people that were uh working for the company that uh did not expect me back without going into great detail i'm shocked that i'm back uh, I'm either there for a good time or I'm there for a long time. We will find out which one. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's first time in four years. Add to that rise. Add to that uh, doing uh, commentary for Premier Championship Wrestling based out of Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Uh, a nice schedule to uh, keep up to date and keep hip and, and know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Myself and Robert Parker Williams, I will say, my BFF of all time mm-hmm. uh, back in Fight Society. And I said uh, in ring, I'm not going to say hell froze over. But it's probably awfully cold down there that him and I step foot in that building again. Mm-hmm. So uh, interested to see the talent, especially Behemoth. That's obviously the the uh, reason that we were there. Mm-hmm. So uh, interested to see kind of what plays out. And you know, there is one way to find out what plays out. Do you know what that way is? Oh, what's that? Percy? You can either go to the show live, or you can go to indiewrestling.us, or you can message Sword personally. What? And <laughs> and he will give you all the details. <laughs> At any time of day, by the way. Oh, uh, well, I, I, it is at the point that people are uh, messaging me on LinkedIn now asking me re- questions about independent professional wrestling in Pittsburgh. Well, you that's are the... A, that's a new one for me. You're the, the wizard of wrestling. I, I don't think we need to go that far, but... Um, king of combat. King of combat? Yes. I'm definitely not the king of combat. That's... <laughs> way far from you know from all my involvement in professional wrestling i'm actually a the fairly purveyor of pugilism winner 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 hashtag purveyor of pugilism no, show title it's okay uh <laughs> the purveyor of pugilistic podcasts oh Ooh. i need I'm more mad good. mike in my life yeah <laughs> i'm pretty good with stuff you're a writer for you uh um, i'm an idea man so i You've been at this for a while, BC. Yeah, 18 years. 18. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. In July, my career will be old enough to vote. Awkward silence. Mm-hmm. Or as, uh, oh, what did... What or did, old enough to date people over 18. I believe I believe a certain brother or friend of the show uh, said on commentary to Revenge of John McChesney's 18-year career, it's old enough to buy a pack of smokes and buy a moody... Uh, get a pack of smokes and buy a duty magazine. That's a good way to measure it. Yes. That's a very good way to measure it. Yes, that, and that line is on the last uh, Revenge Pro show, by the way. So. God bless whoever said that. <laughs> so, um, but anyways, uh, uh, so, oh God, Tony F is in the chat room. Well, uh, you know, I must have him blocked because normally when he posts stuff, I just kind of ignore it. He's the, uh... oh, no, there it is. Yeah, it could be closer to my lips. Is that better for you, buddy? <laughs> Um, so you're, you're working with a lot of these, uh, groups with a lot of the younger talent, uh, coming up here. Uh, what are you seeing out there? That's kind of, uh, 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 interesting. Uh, I've said this, I started in wrestling in 2001 and three years before that I was going to shows, you know, mm-hmm. set up the ring chairs, whatever I could to pay my dues or just be closer to it. And, and uh, just kind of fill my head with as much knowledge as I could. Mm-hmm. I would say the talent now. Let me just adjust my uh, Calvin Couture shirt here. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, the talent now is probably the best it's ever been. Mm-hmm. Uh, men, women, everything. F- female wrestling in this area. Female wrestlers were few and far between. There was a very, very limited amount. Mm-hmm. And now you've got five to ten quality that you can put on any show. You've got Angel Gate. You've got uh, women wrestling all throughout Pittsburgh. You've got intergender wrestling, which I know everybody has their opinions on. But mm-hmm. you've got... Uh, 
kind of on the cusp of what's trending and, and what's hot, so to speak. The talent is the best it's ever been. Mm-hmm. You can go just to about every single show and there's something for you. Years past, there would be some shows where you're like, oh my God, these are so bad. Mm-hmm. There is nothing on here. Like these people, uh, they're throwing punches that look like they're flapping out their arm. They're, they're, uh, it looks like they're, you know, uh, two people just rolling around humping, not actually having a wrestling match. The talent's definitely the best it's ever been. And I think that goes to not only the talent themselves, the evolution of the wrestling business, but also the trainers. That's definitely a huge part as well. And you can see that with uh, the new talent that's come out over the last, I would say, five to six years. Mm -hmm. From people that just started like Johnny Patch and Mandime to uh, people that have have gone through like your Lee Moriarty's. That's a kid that's going to be so amazing in five years if not in one year i mean he's amazing now but just it's always so good and i always tell people when they ask me about like oh what's what's going on with wrestling what are you doing now i said just go to a show Mm -hmm. go to a show one that i'm on because Mm -hmm. hello but uh, just go to a show and you'll see how good things are and how different they are especially if you're a lapsed fan and Mm -hmm. i think there is some of that because fans kind of have a shelf life yeah so uh, the game has changed considerably. It's a dedication to say, even if you're like, I'm going to follow that one promotion once a month, and you know, to, to have the money for it, to go to travel for it, yeah. take the time for it, you know, to take a Saturday or, or, or you know, or whatever other day of the week, right? Um, and wrestling shows are on Saturdays around here, you know, for the most part. Yeah. So, and it, it it sometimes is a hodgepodge because there's so much going on. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you're following these companies on social media, which I definitely encourage, you can kind of know what's up to date. You don't really have to, you know, write out your calendar six months in advance. You can kind of go as, you know, a few weeks ahead or a month ahead or so and, and plan out what you're going to be seeing and who you're going to see and everything like that. I'm one that I know sometimes I come off as bitter. I come off as angry. I come off as, well, in my day, because some of the stuff, you know, uh, that's what I grew up on. But I always try and make sure that I'm not one of those veterans that is so far behind the times or kind of has the blinders on and I don't see what's ahead of me. I just see what was behind me and how I remembered it. So uh, I can't say enough of the companies that I work for. Uh, Back at Fight Society again, where I started, interested to see how that goes. Uh, Back at Rise, or not Back at Rise, I've been at Rise, which I love, which uh, except for Marcus Mann because he's a stupid jerk face Mm -hmm. and he wears stupid hats. Um, premiere in Cleveland. I mean, you can pretty much hit anywhere except maybe like Nebraska or somewhere, and you can find yep. an independent wrestling I'll show. I'll find out. <laughs> I'm going to Nebraska like tomorrow. So yeah. if you know any indie wrestling in the Lincoln, Nebraska area that I can take a, like, take a lift to, let me know. I do hear Lincoln Extreme Wrestling is pretty big out oh, there. Oh, yeah. Ellie L- L- Lou. They have a doink. They have a doink. <laughs> they have two or three, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean... Uh, uh, so some good stuff uh, going on there and, and you know, I know you've been, uh, recruiting some of the younger talent there, uh, as well. So, um, excellent. Excellent. So, so what is, um, what, what have you been, you know, other than what's happening in the Indies and, and everything, what, what have you been kind of keeping an eye out for? What's kind of been getting your attention? Uh, there's two things specifically. One, I'm very, very interested to see what uh, all elite wrestling does. Mm-hmm. I know they've had one, two shows. Uh, but if you look at the where they come from, the young bucks that got a deal with Hot Topic, an independent signing that got a deal with Hot Topic that has sold out of merchandise, mm-hmm. uh, the ability to market themselves. As somebody that has a marketing degree, humble brag, uh, it's not as simple as just advertising. You need to worry about brand management. You need to worry about your audience, your your niche that you're looking for. And they've been able to find that. And it seems to be growing and growing and growing. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be interesting because some people don't remember what Monday Night Wars were. Mm -hmm. They have no earthly idea what it's like to be like, okay, I have two companies that are national that I need to catch up with because I don't want to miss something. I don't think they're going to run on the same night. I doubt it. But still, it's, it's exciting to have mainstream wrestling, different companies that you can watch on TNT and USA. It makes me kind of feel like a, a kid again. Um, and Fox. Yeah. And, well, yeah. And Fox was, which is crazy because that's that everybody gets Fox. Yeah. So you would imagine WWE by being on Fox should have a larger audience. It should have a, a more scope and with having competition, they should put out a better product. You don't, if you're being chased by somebody and they're trying to kill you, you're going to run a lot faster than if you're just running for fun or running for 
and that's, you know, and that's whatever. where we turn. Well, to... I mean, it depends on who's trying to kill you. Well, that's true. That's true. That goes back to that <laughs> no bad touch thing. Yes. Um. And, and and that in that Fox again that that runs to like the first time primetime national, you know, over the air. You know, if that matters anymore, television. You know, since SmackDown was on UPN. And the CW, right? Yes. Which had a much smaller uh, footprint at the time. So it'll be interesting to see what that does for that. And if the product changes because of it. I mean, that, that I can only had. be good. I, yeah. If anybody has the network, you mentioned about other stuff. Uh, if you watch Monday Night Raw mm-hmm. from 93 or 94 to 95, mm-hmm. and then from, say, 96 on, it is a vastly different product. Oh, absolutely. In, mm-hmm. in, in almost in a few weeks span, once Nitro hit the air, it's okay, now somebody's nipping at our heels. We need to up our game. And that yeah. that's only a good thing. Yeah. So That's also when they started going live more, too, just to simply true. compete. Mm-hmm. Well, didn't it... Was uh, Monday Night Raw initially a live show, though? Uh, no. No? Uh, what, what they did was every, like, second or third week was live. Yeah, and they recorded so, the rest. So they would... they would um Because I used to go to some of these tapings at the Civic Center. They would have the first episode live. So like the first hour or something at the time. Yeah. And then they would air two more episodes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they didn't do a lot of backstage segments, so it was just a lot of matches and stuff. So you could get through them relatively quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Because Raw was only an hour back then, too. So, I mean, you know, the, those were the days. Yes, when I <laughs> tuned in for my one hour of wrestling every week to get my fix. And now it's mm-hmm. like, oh, God, there's so much wrestling. I think I saw a tweet that said there is literally, if you DVR'd wrestling from and had a, a large cable package and online, you could literally watch wrestling every single hour of the week. Not counting stuff that's on the network, not counting. Yeah, yeah, just but, stuff but if that's you, on television. Yeah, or it's like wow. every eight, uh, there was a time, a number, I can't remember the specific number, but there's a lot. Well, so yeah, if you're a wrestling fan, you'll find something. At least uh, 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 six to seven hours of WWE, uh, including syndication, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. You're talking about uh, an hour of Ring of Honor. You're talking about an hour uh, or, or two of New Japan on Access, or in, plus the Women of Wrestling show when that's on. Uh, what else would be out there right now? NXT yeah. on Hulu, Impact. Yeah, uh, see, NXT on Hulu. But I mean, NXT wouldn't be on TV unless you're in certain countries. And I think AAA. AAA is on TV somewhere. Somewhere. Uh, yeah, I think like Telemundo probably carries yeah. it, right? And so, New Japan on Access still, maybe. Yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, did you... yeah, I did. Okay. Uh, that and the women of wrestling. My CTE yeah. is gonna. That's fine. Kick in. That's fine. A lot of <laughs> a lot of headshots at ringside. Yeah. So. <laughs> But uh, but yeah but yeah or if you get international or something you'll get something out of that yeah so there's um, I mean there's tons of stuff you'll find it, just like with local independent wrestling you'll find something yeah yeah so I, I think people just uh, think that the only thing is that Monday night and there's there's a lot of lot to it so and again I'm saying you know if you're a WWE fan and and uh, like the craziest thing is like canceling your WWE network because you think Raw sucks. Right. Yeah. Because yeah, it's, but especially since Raw isn't even on the network. Yeah. Like you're hurting guys who are working really hard, like everyone on two hundred five, NXT and NXT UK. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see if All Elite takes off on TNT, which I'm sure the first week it's going to be ridiculous because they're going to plug it, they're going to promote it, everybody's yeah, going to everybody's going to want to check it out. Yeah. But if it can sustain numbers. If I am a network executive or I am a company that kind of wants to shake up my programming or what have you, I might look into some kind of wrestling company. Maybe not to create it because you have to have a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Tony Khan does. But but maybe Sinclair says, hey, look what these guys did. Maybe let's up our game. Mm-hmm. Or somebody takes, I don't know, MLW, for example, which is also I think you can find mm-hmm. on TV as well. And somebody says, wow, you know what? They have Brian Pillman Jr. They have... Uh, uh, Davy Boy Smith Jr. They have you know name recognition. They have guys that can go. Maybe we'll do something with that. It's gonna. It's definitely an exciting time to be a wrestling fan, to be involved in the wrestling business, to enjoy wrestling, mm-hmm. or even people that maybe are out of the game, so to speak. Because yeah. maybe yeah. you remember Cody Rhodes, but you don't really know kind of what's going on. And okay, well I'll give it a shot. I'll see what he's doing. Mm-hmm. And I think what he's done is incredible. So mm-hmm. uh, it, it's a good time. It's not like uh, five, six, seven years ago where it was kind of dark. 
and and just miserable at some times because there was only one thing that you could really watch so and everybody was just kind of on the indies doing their thing but uh yeah, yeah. i mean i think i think looking around here and looking at how much wrestling is in the area and everything is doing fairly well yeah. you know like across the board it's just it's pretty good and when indies so. do, uh, when wwe and, and mainstream does well it trickles down to the uh mm-hmm. to the indie where trickle down economics does work is professional is wrestling. In it, yes absolutely fantastic so uh that's awesome so bc steel he's coming to your town yes I, I might actually be outside your house at the end of this so that could uh, be that could be um so uh in the meantime want to give a shout out to our friends uh slice on broadway fueling us with some pepperoni pizza here supporting pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza uh down in beachview Carnegie, pa uh <clears throat> hot east end the pnc park home of the pittsburgh pirates they are expanding so much that the sticker they gave us today only has three of their locations uh so that's how much they are uh, expanding since uh with the mayhem bump since uh they've been apart they had one lowly location right up the street here man now they're now they're citywide uh so go check them out and again our unofficial uh marketing campaign for our friends to help their global expansion uh because we know a lot of you are from across the country so if you have a, a, a Broadway in your town, a Broadway Avenue, please take a picture of the road sign. Please tag PGH underscore slice on the Twitter and tell them that you want to slice on your Broadway and help them uh, find their next location. Because you know they're going to grow. I mean, look at them. Four locations. Shoot. You get that on. You get that Mayhem Show rub, man. That's right. Exactly. So go support them. Support the pizza that supports the Mayhem Show. Slice on Broadway. We'll be back with a big question after this message. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. But is Effie not the greatest thing in independent pro wrestling right now? Have you seen the promo of him for for him versus Orange Cassidy? Uh, one where he's just drinking orange juice with his hand down his pants. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's 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 good. It, it, it's like, <laughs> and it's like, and the title is, I just I want the real thing. Yeah, so, yeah, that's Effie. Uh, Matt, are you doing that promo right now? Are you doing the Effie promo right now? No, not consciously. Not con- maybe <laughs> <laughs> not consciously. Okay, that's not a no. I've been wanting a reason to get him back on the show just so I can have another conversation with him because that was one of my just, favorite interviews. Just ask him. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you know. <laughs> There's that sure. too, but I'm pretty I mean, sure you can just ask him. Yeah, I mean, he already likes like half my tweets, so uh, which I'm I'm honored. Uh, but <laughs> so, um, anyways, what a guy. What's that? What a guy. What a guy. <laughs> that could be the big question. Who are you uh, most excited to have liked your tweet in professional wrestling? Uh, Peyton Royce. Peyton Hi. Royce. All right, you win that no. one. No, no, actually, uh, that's not true. That that's just the most recent. Okay. <laughs> when I, when I was when I was live tweeting Luther Underground. Oh a man. Plethora. Oh my oh, god. Man. Oh my god. You're right, Mike. Every you no know, star. Anytime Aerostar liked my tweet, I was like, yes. And now anytime I, I just want to see English, him like a tweet. He likes my tweet. Now I just want to see him like a tweet to know that he's still alive. Yeah, there's that he's too. Okay. He's fallen from much higher than that. <sighs> I think he's healing in the future. I I, I, saw, I did see something where uh, they're showing a gif of Lady Gaga jumping off the Super Bowl at her Super Bowl performance, <laughs> and as soon as the camera cuts away, it's just arrow star falling. It was really Maybe like great. the one where it cuts away, where he falls like a lot further, where it yeah. cuts away, and there's like some like outside, and there's like <laughs> it's really great. Fucking oh, arrow man. star, don't do that. Don't do that anymore, sir. Oh. We like you too much. Never you know what? To get his shit in. That is a good question. <laughs> we we've had this discussion. I know I have this every time we talk about G Raver, and you guys are having this kind of about uh, Aerostar right now. Uh, so our big question uh, this week: Who is the pr- uh, uh, the person? I'm going to. I'm not even going to say pro wrestler. Who is the person in professional wrestling that you are worried about for their health and safety the most? Oh boy. Oh, yeah. uh, just in, like, in general or specifically uh, <laughs> the the person specifically jeff hardy jeff hardy you're just still worried about you're just still worried about jeff hardy Sorg, i always worry about jeff hardy okay because right now he's injured and he has a lot of time on his hands oh no yeah but i mean he's got a, <laughs> he's got a good support system now right mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Let me just go back. I just go back to Matt just, just downing that Gatorade. <laughs> By the way, Matt Carlin's Mainstream Matt is with us. We're going to be talking New Japan him, with him What's in a happening? moment. I, I didn't give you a proper uh, back since we uh, went live kind of under the radar here a few minutes ago. Um, that was our big question. Who are oh, you worried about? Oh, that's actually it. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Who are you worried about? Yeah, still Jeff Hardy. Still Jeff Hardy. Now, you saw Jeff Hardy through the bad years. Sort of. I've seen Jeff Hardy through every year. Yeah, there's that too. Because you I were... saw him when he got when he got squashed to Razor Ramon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, and and I'm com- <sighs> he has a lot of time on his hands. <laughs> he has a that lot is the scary of part. Of, the scary part about Jeff Hardy is we've been watching him do scary stuff since we were all teenagers. Yeah, and that is not a short amount of time. Yeah. So we've been watching him do not, crazier and crazier not. things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he has not stopped doing scary things. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, he's not doing quite as much. I mean, the worst thing he does now is n- n- land directly on people with that swanton. That worries. That, I'm worried about his opponents. Uh, Sorg, you don't remember that Hell in a Cell with Randy Orton, do you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was about to say, like, yeah, like, because just before that Hell in a Cell, people were like, what's the crazy thing Jeff's going to do? And then you hear other people saying well jeff says he's gonna slow it down a little bit jeff says he's gonna take it easy i'm like jeff hardy doesn't take it easy Mm -hmm. all right and sure enough he's you know did what yeah that was scary at home so i actually that long ago i think i have an answer i was i'm sitting here thinking because as soon as you said that i'm like oh my god i'm going to say shane mcmahon and here's why okay (laughs) one he takes incredibly ridiculous bumps Uh, obviously some like crash pads but still like he falls from great heights and he does that Van Terminator thing, that coast to coast. Yeah. And in my experience, sometimes when guys get older, they still do the same things and it takes longer to recover and it's more dangerous and they may have to feel like, okay, well, I can't do that. So I'm going to have to up the game. Yeah. And I could see him falling from an even greater height for a WrestleMania or something else. I was trying to think, who do I see fall? And I think, oh God, they're going to die. And that was the guy that I thought of. And... Anytime I watch like an insane death match, I'm like, they're, oh, like it's kind of like watching, uh, watching car crashes for me. Like sometimes I'm like, oh God, I don't want to see, like I want to watch, but at the same time, I'm like, oh God, don't get hurt. Please don't die. Mm-hmm. Which I think oh, was absolutely. A for somebody. Sorg. Sorg. G Raver. That's, that's, that's my general answer. Yeah. I mean, always I'm always Sean I'm always concerned. How many times? Have I texted you or forwarded a tweet to you about G Raver and been like, dude, look what G Raver was doing over the weekend? And it's like, it's someone tweeting, we hope G Raver's okay. That's always, it's always yeah. like the tweet about the vague, we hope G Raver's okay and tweet again, from the weekend. Every and time. you have to go back and search out, seek out what he did, to, what he did, you know? Um, um, every time I see him, um, good to see you again. We we're worried about you. Uh, is literally I and I have said that to him at least the last two times I've run into him. So there's I, that. I can add to that. Did you see the AIW spot where it was Matt Justice and I think Eric Ryan? Oh, where they it, they went off the balcony. Was this the JD Lightning th- stuff from the weekend? I th- or more? Like, I think it was it was a month ago. Okay, but they they came out of the balcony and they both went through a table. And oh, I geez. I don't know what happened from it. It terrified me. Yeah. So I will I will add them onto that because that was. Uh, that was scary. Uh, props to them. I, I do not have the the desire or the stones to do that. There so. has been because somebody else was sharing a gif of of doing the move that actually that Sean Phoenix did when he had his accident. Unfortunately, um, the the um, front flip into the table on the floor yeah. situation, and, and and it's one thing for like you know uh, Mustafa Ali to be doing it on SmackDown where. You know, it's a bigger scale, and they have a lot of padding. Like literally, if this thing that happened to Sean happened on like a SmackDown ring, like it would not have been as severe. No, I cannot imagine. Um, but you know, kind of the like, you know, hey, somebody was like, hey, when are we going to stop doing this move? Because bad mm-hmm. stuff is happening with it. So, um, but anyways, but that's one of those things that's out there. Um, Josh Bishop, Bishop versus Matt Justice was that, was that the one? You okay, it yeah, might have been that. Okay. Yeah, I, it was an insane spot. Yeah. Uh, I want to touch on a couple of these from the from the chat real quick. Um, let's see. We got a whole list of this up. This is a good question. <laughs> uh, let's see. Somebody, I, I know I saw, and I can't, I'll find out who said it. Uh, I said, whoever Nick Gage is fighting. Um, 
which uh, seems definitely seems accurate to me. Uh, let's see. Uh, sh nope, nope, that's from the thing before. Um, that was Alex Miller that, that actually said that one. Tina says, Angelico, Jimmy Havoc, gosh, Joe Gacy. I don't know mm -hmm. what Joe Gacy's been doing, but I, I know like Jimmy Havoc does a lot of crazy stuff. Tina's worried about Charlotte. <laughs> what what has Charlotte been doing? I mean, she seemed to like be bleeding every big match at this point. Well, red equals green, so maybe that's the philosophy. Yeah, hey, just like just like uh, just like Daddy, right? So uh, Bradley's out there. He's saying Daniel Bryan. I hope he doesn't run into more concussion issues. Ooh, that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good, uh, let's throw Sasha Banks on that pile too, and Alexa yeah. Bliss. And Alexa Bliss. Yeah, because mm -hmm. she's been getting a bit of injuries too, right? Yep. So, um, also, uh, Alex Miller is uh, uh, scared for the NXT call-ups. That's just career scared. Yeah, yeah, it is <laughs> career scared. I mean, I didn't just kind of say generally, uh, who are you worried about? Uh, Mikey Whiplash from ICW. That's enough words and letters to let me know that that guy's doing some crazy stuff. Um, assuming he comes back from Podner, uh, Champa with all those surgeries. I mean, this is the second time he's had to go in. That's true. That's, that's and a, speaking of surgeries, uh, Nia Jax had two ACLs replaced. I think mm -hmm. is that that really? Yeah, I yeah. know. Jeez. When you have, uh, as I'm pulling string off my face for some reason, when you have two ACLs replaced, yeah, I, I don't know how you rehab that because the the point is you have one good leg of which to brace yeah. and to recover and to to do certain rehabs. Like I don't know how you actually do that and i would imagine that chance of re-injury would be pretty high so well uh, kevin kevin owens did have both his knees done that's true although uh, the one thing i will say about nia jack she's not like most girls so mm -hmm. shout out to her theme music yeah there's that too that's a horrible joke uh, I, I also get worried uh for anyone that wrestles ronda rousey yeah there's that just just in general kind of like the nick gage thing uh yeah no no not like that at all mm -hmm. <laughs> what um, nick gage does in, is intentional partners uh, partner i think is referring to naya jacks uh saying that uh, her instagram stories are showing her working out good wow. so good for her there you go um and uh they say ricky shane page yeah uh, alex is pulling uh pointing out zandig versus joey Danella that went off the roof that kept them oh my out god of, that kept them off of super indie that one year because it was like a week before yeah. wasn't it yep so um oh uh this is this is weird i also worry about that kid on youtube that takes his shirt off and jumps into things uh, <laughs> what <laughs> wait wait yeah is that wrestling related it's, oh, uh, technically. It, it, it absolutely is is it yeah, and he's he's everything's like this for juggalos and juggalettes. He takes his shirt off, whoop whoop, and then dives through like uh, AIDS infested needles in a mousetrap or something. I don't know um, what that yeah. is, but yeah, like um, he jumped onto a bed of thumbtacks. He jumped into a wheelbarrow full of Legos, and one he actually had a Sean Phoenix shirt on. Oh no! Because that's how you're going to pay tribute to Sean Phoenix. <laughs> Just uh... okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, like it, it, it's wrestling adjacent because uh, <laughs> all all of his posts say elbow drop EC Mick Foley ECW style, and I'm like, that's not exactly how that is he, goes. Wait, is he wearing the Unbreakable? Yes. One. Oh yes. no. Yes. Wait, how do yeah. you know about this? You seen the video? <laughs> I wanted to retweet that, but every time I would type up a caption for it, I thought people were going to hate me and call me names if I type this. Because none of the jokes I had were positive whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, he's he doesn't really well, invite it. He also seems to knock himself out after every jump when it doesn't seem possible for that to happen. But still, he's down for a little bit. He sells really well. He does. Mm -hmm. He sells it in the face and by literally not moving. Is it follow the leader? No. No. Kimberly versus what am I looking for? Uh, um, I need a I need shirtless to... wrestling fan wheelbarrow Legos. Seriously? And then five million <laughs> videos. Oh, oh superhuman. Fan but superhuman. human is with two M's, I believe. Two M's or two N's? Two, oh, maybe super... two N's. It might be no, superhuman. Super so maybe it's super. If it's two M's, it would be super. <laughs> Bobby humming. the Brain Human. Oh no. <laughs> oh, uh, I found rice gum. No, that's not right. Right, but well, what? <laughs> 
<laughs> front flip. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Front flip. I found it. Front flip oh, yeah. in the barbed wire uh, Mick Foley style. Yep. Oh, mm-hmm. man. This kid yep. is bored, uh, apparently. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, there he is. Oh, no. I've seen this. He's down with a clown. Okay. Yep. I did see this pop up. He's got to he take the shirt off. He has a lot of those videos. Oh, no. Oh, that's bad. That's mm-hmm. not okay. This is why yeah. you should that's, educate that's... children better. Oh. Trainers, EMTs, referees down. Yeah, but you're going to see those uh, uh, pop up again. Uh, and it is H-U. I mean, to be fair, M-A-N. Darwin spoke about this, so. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> you know, eventually things sort themselves out. Appreciate Sometimes it. not quick enough. That's a lot of times not quick enough. Well, on that note, uh, on things that will not be hazardous to your health, uh, let's give a shout out to Occupy Pro Wrestling. Uh, Pro Wrestling is a wild and crazy art form, not as crazy as that guy, and Occupy Pro Wrestling is here to look at what makes it fun, featuring articles, blogs, and a podcast that brings you interviews with fellow fans. Can't wait for that to come out. Occupy Pro Wrestling is bringing the smart back in smart mark. Go check it out at OccupyProWrestling.com and check out all the great merchandise he has over there. There are a lot of stickers and stuff around here, and and, uh, I'm sporting the shirt from time to time as well. Uh, Some great stuff that our friend Alex Carr is out there in California is doing, and go support them. They've been supporting the Mayhem for a good while. Hey, I want to take a moment to touch base with, uh, wait, wait, he's uh, he's hydrating so he can tell us all that's going on. (laughs) He's he's still (laughs) hydrating. There he goes. (laughs) uh so a lot is happening in new japan professional wrestling uh these days and uh matt i wanted to get you on to just like let us know because i know you have been really getting into this lately it is it is that time of year with all the i i am become such a low loyal viewer of new japan world yes even i'm ashamed are you getting the kids coming home from work my my youngest, who is the more wrestling inclined of my two sons, is is into it. He likes watching it because he, he does know some of the guys. Mm-hmm. Um, he was the one. Um, it's been a little tougher since the elite guys left. Uh, you know, Mason was the kid who was like for a while there. He was just like throwing Kenny Omega V triggers around the living room, just nonstop, just like running back and forth. <laughs> Like just screaming V trigger at the top of his lungs and jumping into me, jumping into the dog and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, fantastic, so he's cool a little bit. So having Mox around has definitely helped. Uh, okay. It's always good to have a familiar face to kind I, of bridge I, that I'm gap. I'm sure that's helped you in a couple of different ways, Matt. Uh, well, you know the problem is that, and everyone who has kids will know this is that you know where you know if your if your adult friend tries to throw a V trigger at you, you know you can kind of like you know protect your face. But when like a nine year old kid is throwing a V trigger at you, you got to protect a lot lower, you know. So you got to be ready for that. Man. And the kids don't care where they hit you. That's you know? more like They're a D trigger, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's more like a yeah, a D trigger. Yeah. Whatever your mind is thinking, yes, that's exactly what's happening. Um, it's all those things. Yes, Man. yes, and yes, and yes, and yes, and yes. Um, <laughs> You know, you know what else is interesting too, Sorg, is that, and this is interesting for me too. Uh, he, he's into Jushin Thunder Liger. No you way! Know? And it made me realize because he remembers Liger doing that takeover show <sighs> against Tyler Breeze no all way. those years ago, and it reminded me, you know, Jushin Thunder Liger is the gateway drug to Japanese wrestling for like. 30 years worth of fans mm-hmm. like it's ligers their first guy they see and they're just like oh hey they are i'll check this guy out and then it leads to everything else like that's you know and this is ligers last year so um so it's interesting to see like yeah it's interesting to be reminded like how important he is like just being that ambassador for japanese wrestling for all the kids all around the world he's still drawing new fans the Japanese wrestling all these years later. Is, is, it, is it something where is it worthwhile to kind of pull some like WCW uh, old matches or even old stuff on World for him? Uh, it's not really, you know, because he hasn't remembered the WCW years. No, I guess not. Than we yeah. do. So you're just showing him a bunch of strangers um, again. But, uh, you know, I, I try every once in a while. Um, yeah. As long as the action gets wild, he'll get into it. Um, 
But uh, you know, he he just likes good action. And, and the good thing is that he's excellent taste in wrestlers. So if he likes a wrestler, it's usually a good wrestler. So if he's drawn into someone, it's usually because it's Kenny Omega or it's Will Ospreay or someone like that. Because, <laughs> like I said, he has excellent taste. He has better taste than me. Like I I can't resist a bad wrestler here or there. You know, but but Mason's like nothing but the cream of the crop for him. <laughs> so of course we do know John Moxley uh, just got the uh, was the U.S. Championship uh, from Juice Jennings, um, Juice Robinson, Juice Robinson, Juice Robinson, somebody else. Wow. Uh, okay. Nope. Say that was news to me. That's Holy guy, cow! Yeah, that guy from Ohio. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, uh, but uh, anyways, uh, so so what else is coming up with you know what's kind of the state of New Japan these days? What 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 should we jump be jumping into or maybe looking for on Axis in the coming months? Uh, we are getting ready for the start of the G One Climax Tournament because they're uh, that is opening on Saturday, July sixth. They're doing the first night in Dallas <laughs> for uh, most which is, of the people. What? Yeah, for a certain someone in the G one tournament, it's not allowed to be there. Right. Well, we can talk about that real quick too, because Moxley's not going to be at that first night. Okay. But it's okay because it's not his block having the matches, so it's not completely weird. But uh, okay. Yeah, I think there's probably some sort of contractual deal with uh, his AEW contract that um, that might not be allowing him to. Mm-hmm. Uh, to do the uh, Dallas show, but oh. like I said, it's not going to interfere with uh, with too much. And then the uh, and then yeah, then they resume the tournament a week after that, the following Saturday, and then things really picked up. And uh, they're going to be going. This thing's going to be going for a month and a half, sort. No lie, wow. uh, they're doing the G one, so it's all stretched out. Um, it's going to be crazy. Some of these matches that are going to be happening. Are just crazy. I, I need to. I need to bring my notes up here because I'm, I'm always forgetting the uh, the faces. Um, I, I need the graphic with all the faces on. There it is. All right. So I mean, well, speaking of guys that we're worried about, um, I should have <laughs> mentioned Kota Ibushi. Uh, oh God, yeah, geez. I forgot to mention him. Yeah, he has a. But but apparently he's all right. He's good to go, despite like bonking himself off the apron. Uh, him and Naito. Uh, yeah, when they did the uh, uh, the Dominion card a, a little bit ago, uh, so anyway, Sorg, yeah, I don't know if you got. Do you have a block? Uh, hold on, I, I, either of I, these. I can look them up. I can look them up as you're talking here. Let me tell you a little bit of something about a block in the G1. <laughs> this sucker, this stupid side of the tournament is like stacked. Um, I know the opening night in Dallas, they're going to be doing um, Okada and Tanahashi the first night. Uh, Kenta is back. Hideo Itami, for all you ignorant Americans like me. Um, <laughs> wow. And uh, he's opening up against Kota Ibushi in Dallas. Jeez. Um, plus that same block. That's the block that has Osprey in it. Uh, and it's got against Sonata Lance, and Zack Sabre that, Jr. So and, uh, and, uh, I got, I got too, right? What's that? Show and Yo are in that one too. Show and Yo are not in the G. No, no. Oh, I thought they were in the G one. They were in the yeah, uh, so best I, of the Super Juniors. I'm looking. I'm really looking good, at but... at Kota Ibushi and Kenta. I'm looking at Will Osprey versus Lance Archer. Evil, Evil and Bad Luck Fale. Sonata and Zack Saber Junior. And these are all the Dallas yeah. show. Yeah. So all you need to do is like look at all those names from that A lock card from the opening night in Dallas and realize that all of those guys are going to be eventually having a match against one another. So Tanahashi's going to have a match against Abushi in this tournament and Okada. Jeez. And we're going to get Tanahashi versus Osprey. And we're going to get Tanahashi versus Zack Sabre Jr. again. And we're going to get Tanahashi versus Kenta. Uh, and, on the, uh, and, you know, all the rest of the gang. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is a tournament. I'm looking at the dates here. So it, it starts, like you said, on that uh, July 6th um, in, in Dallas, continuing on the 13th and, and, and very... You know, often after that, several nights uh, a week here, and it's going to end with the final of a uh, uh, A block winner versus B block winner in August twelfth. That's right, a month and a Jeez. damn half. Jeez. Breakfast with Breakfast with Moxley is what I'm uh, calling it. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, 
I, I just like it was it was hilarious. I just asked him. I asked my wife, and I'm like, "Hey, hi, wife, Moxley wants to be in the G1. Do you want to watch a John Moxley match every other morning for about a month and a half with me uh, from Japan?" She's like, "That sounds great. Let's do that." I was like, "Okay." <laughs> so, so, so I just uh, so yeah. So B Block. I, I want to go to B Block because I want to talk about the the true dream match of this tournament for me at least. Mm-hmm. Um, which is uh, John Moxley versus Toro Yano. Um, I don't know. What? I'm, I'm sure someone Wait. might be uh, familiar Yano? with uh, Toro Yano. Uh, is, um, is, uh, he, he's a cheater. He's charming. He's cheating. He's mischievous. He's... Uh, I'm not sure how else to help better to describe him. Uh, it, it just seems like it's one of those just perfect disaster kind of matches that's oh, going to be no. happening on the 1st of August. And uh, I, I am I'm so ready for this match between him and Moxley. <laughs> I just want it so bad, and that's on top of what I mean. Just the, yeah, th- th- this is crazy. Like Moxley's gonna have a match against uh, Tomohiro Ishii, who goes you just is like is like the classic like forearms and headbutts kind of you know Japanese wrestler. He's awesome. Uh, he has great matches with everyone. He's gonna have a great match against Moxley. It's gonna be crazy uh he's gonna have moxley's gonna have a match against naito uh it's probably gonna be a lot like you know those jericho matches that naito was having uh he's there's gonna be mox we're gonna get moxley versus jeff cobb in this tournament Jeez. we're gonna get moxley versus we're gonna get moxley versus jay white um we're gonna get moxley versus shingo takagi you know the guy who was like undefeated or unpinned unsubmitted in new japan for for Months on end until he was finally, finally beaten by uh, Will Ospreay in the best of the Super Junior this Finals. Is, this is, by the way, I, I, I'm where I'm getting the block information. I don't know if it's the same as you, Matt. Uh, I'm getting the block information and matches off of CBS. Oh, excellent! That's ha, good. Has That's your quality has information your, has your influence been trickling up the chain? I can only hope. It's about time they started listening to me. So that's, that's right. Be, be a good thing. <laughs> I, I, I want to point I, out, I, Matt. I think, you, Matt Carlin's once again got pro wrestling on the CBS website. It's true. Yes. I'm happy to to do my part to uh, to spread the good word. Um, if you go to the English New Japan website, the NJPW1972.com, you could find the full match listing for every damn match on this card. So they the matches are scheduled, even the undercard stuff. Um, I don't know if you remember the video that went around where John Moxley uh, abducted that young lion that he beat up at Dominion. Mm-hmm. Uh, he dragged him off with him, and he just said, "I'm taking this guy. He's he's my young lion now." They are going to be tagging on the undercards of those, not on the on the on the G1 cards where really? Moxley does not have a one on one tournament match. Moxley and I think it's uh, I think the guy is Shota Umino is the guy's name. And Moxley and his young lion that he kidnapped will be a tag team uh, doing undercard matches against whoever. You know, it's always a preview match, him versus whoever he's wrestling the next night. It cracked me up. I, I'd never seen that, you know, since I started uh, watching the New Japan of some other guy just beating up a young lion, dragging him backstage with him, just being like, yeah, good job, kid. Uh, you're, you're, you're mine now. I'm, I'm taking you with me. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jeez. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Mox is already doing lots of fun things. I'm enjoying. I'm very much enjoying that. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to Kenta seeing what he's got. Like no one's very, no one's really sure. Mm-hmm. Like what he's going to bring to the table. Like is it going to be anything close? And I've tried to go back and kind of dabble in some very, you know, some pre NXT Kenta. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got to go. You know, I have to get on YouTube, find some of those old Noah shows uh, to kind of see them. Uh, and I've watched them. I'm still kind of in the uh, phase where I'm kind of educating myself on that. Um, and uh, I'm I'm very much interested to see what he's able to do. I'm sure he's in his mind. He has a lot to prove. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. But I'm not sure. You know, or we're just not sure. Yeah, you know, he hasn't been very active at all uh, the last couple of years in WWE. Besides, you know, you'd see him <laughs> pop up randomly here or there. Uh, Potter wants a, a uh, backstage segment with uh, Renee feeding the the young lion and mothering him. 
I'm there. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> if only we could. If only we could. Renee. 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 My young lion's coming over. He's going to sleep in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be like, they're going to do, there's going to be some promo where he's it, like, it is, it is the young lion at his house. And you hear a oh voice God. off the side. Happen. Like it's, it's like in the Jericho podcast where she came in, got something you heard her yeah. get something in the fridge they say hi to her and she just walks off because <laughs> not saying yeah. anything because she knows she can't you know so yeah so um, pretending not here. yeah <laughs> like i'm just uh, i'm just over here not jeopardizing my wwe contract uh <laughs> well uh matt thank you for coming on and um and um um, um getting us excited about uh, new japan wrestling again in the mid-season here yeah so uh, and you know as, as i try to do if you're looking for you know that kind of stepping off point for for jumping on board if you want to if you got that get your new japan world subscription if you're so inclined to spend your 999 yen mm-hmm. per month whatever that, uh, whatever want, that translates to this month uh yeah and you want to jump on board uh go back and check out that dominion show mm-hmm. uh check out moxley versus um juice from the uh, best of the super junior finals it was awesome. It was just it's so, so such a wild departure. Um, you, you could just feel him like just shedding the old persona as the match went on. Uh, and Osprey versus Shingo, the best of the Super Junior final was unbelievable. And uh, the 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 Junior Heavyweight title match from Dominion where Osprey uh, wrestled Dragon Lee was awesome too. So there's awesome. a couple for you guys to check out. As much Osprey as you could find is what you need to watch on New Japan World. So Absolutely. he's been on fire. Uh, um, he might be the best in the world right now. Le- last bit, last bit. Uh, Tina says Kenta versus American Dragon from Ring of Honor, which I believe that's Brian Danielson. I will take your recommendation and I will seek that out, Tina. There you go. Uh, Thank you. So with that, it is time to find out what you learned from wrestling this week. Ba-ba. Need like some I know, BC, you had one lined up. Uh, yeah, actually, well, before I do that, and I am a man that has no shame with my cheap plugs, I will okay. say check out Rise on July 20th. Well, I was going to give you a minute. Oh, well, in that case, I'll just do that. that after the segment. Oh, well, I, I like to get okay. my stuff in, kid. Okay. Uh, no, what I learned this week, uh, it's actually something serious. I know that that kind of goes down a different road than what I normally do. But uh, nine years ago today, actually, uh, Trent Acid passed away. Mm-hmm. For people that don't know Trent Acid, uh, he was, he came on the scene right around, like, came big early 2000s to late 2001, I'm sorry, late 2000 uh, to early 2001, kind of when ECW and WCW were already on the downward slide. Uh, he, if ECW would have stayed, you probably would have seen him there. Uh, he was in a tag team called the Backseat Boys with Johnny Cashmere. Who we interviewed uh, when they were leading into his uh, tribute show. Really? Mm-hmm. Huh. And managed by Donnie B. Some may know him as uh, Nova's twin brother. Uh, was a guy that when uh, Bobby Williams, Robert Parker Williams, whatever you want to call him, when him and I started, we were around him a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually got to sit in on seminars with him. Uh, when Potter and I went to Philly in 2004, uh, we got to spend time around him, Johnny Cashmere, and some of the CCW crew. So he was always a guy that was ahead of his time and was so gifted but it was effortless for him. I mean, mm-hmm. he could do things that other guys couldn't do, and it was like breathing or uh, walking. I mean, he could walk, chew gum, and flip and land on his feet at the same time. He was that type of skilled guy. And you've asked before, what's the best and worst thing about wrestling? And the answer I often give when people reference something like that is I say the people. And that's a, a long answer and down a windy road. But part of that is, the bad part about it is sometimes people are around for a little bit and then they disappear. And other times they pass away too soon. And Trent Acid was one of those guys that I think his best years were definitely ahead of him. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't get to kind of realize the fruits of that labor. But uh, if anybody has never seen a Trent Acid match, go to YouTube. He's had great matches with Homicide, uh, great matches with uh, B-Boy, if, if people may know that, that early to mid-2000s. And CZW, he was in Ring of Honor. He was a guy that was just so good. And some a guy that as time goes on, maybe less and less people remember. Yeah. So just this kind of a thing to uh, remember Trent Acid and just watch his matches. Definitely a guy ahead of his time. There was a documentary about him, wasn't there? Yes. Yes. There was actually a there's a small documentary I know on YouTube. If you search Trent Acid, I think it's the first thing that pops up. Okay. And uh, 
Uh, Seth Rollins was interviewed because yeah. they had had matches. Uh, a lot of guys were interviewed. And just one of those guys, kind of bad timing because of when ECW folded. And I think uh, I think Paul Heyman, and I could be wrong on this, but I think Paul Heyman did an interview once and talked about how those guys and your Joey Matthews and your Christian York and even like guys like CM Punk and Colt Cabana, that would have been the nucleus if ECW survived. Like that would have been the youth movement that would have taken place. So again, just, just a, a guy that not only gone too soon, but just so much talent, mm -hmm. so much talent. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, man, Mike, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? Oh boy. What did I learn from wrestling? Um, I learned you need to exorcise your demons if you're Bray Wyatt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do the muscle man dance, everyone. <laughs> Those provos. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen when he actually gets in front of an audience, but I'm kind of curious to see how that works out. So, uh, Main Street Matt, what did you learn? Uh, I learned that apparently it's still not okay for the fans to touch the wrestlers. No, no. Still a bad thing. I did. Were you listening to our conversation earlier on that? Oh, I must have missed that. That was that was basically our that part. was our, that was our first. Segment. Matt, how did you just learn that? What have you been doing <laughs> at shows? Yeah. I, I, I just learned that it is still apparently not okay. Uh, it doesn't mean I didn't know it before. But, it just means that it's still not okay. Like, nothing okay. has changed. Okay. We are still in the say, world that's well. Not Cross good. the barricade, get killed. If you did it in 95, you know, Randy Savage would beat the crap out of you. If you do it in, you know, 2019, uh, someone else will beat the crap out of you. But someone is waiting yeah. to beat the crap out of you if you climb over the barricade. Especially so don't do that. Especially a I've Don't watched, touch the wrestling. I, I've watched Samoans destroy two people, uh, literally two people in uh, in indie wrestling in the last month. Uh, that, oh, sorry. That guy, that guy, and the referee from uh, RWA with Alpha Junior. So uh, I'm sorry. Sorg, I, I also learned one other thing. Hmm. Uh, Monroe Sky is gunning for Kathy Kelly's job. Oh yes, yes. They had uh, the Miz and Maurice's child do interviews um on and it's it's amazing it's yeah. adorable any any word that you can say uh including like ah it's it's that yeah yeah um tina learned uh mentioned it last night she learned that the rhythm is going to get you have you seen the yes. sunny kiss video i watched the entire thing last oh, night with when the I was referee the show. with the referee with, yes with ref aubrey yeah with the ref aubrey it was pretty great um, there was a, a good section where the match continued to the rhythm of the song. Mm -hmm. I and support all things Sunny Kiss, and now I need to see this. You need to see this. Yeah, it's really mm -hmm. great. We it's it's pretty. Sunny awesome. Kiss is a fucking treasure. Yes. And as you said last night, keep Jr. away from Sunny Kiss. Yes, keep Jr. as far the fuck away from Sunny Kiss as humanly possible. Because I can just see. Oh, that that Sunny Kiss is sure an interesting character. Like, and that's the best thing. It's just going to be a lot of Jr. just not understanding what's happening, right? Like, imagine us reacting to Orlando Jordan and TNA. Mm. That's how Jr. is going to react to Sunny Kiss, which is way different. <sighs> well, um, yeah, yes. Well, I learned from wrestling this week. Uh, that, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Neil, I'm pretty much on the rhythm thing too. <laughs> That's <laughs> to all you can think about To be now. quite honest, like, yeah, no, I can't think of anything else at this oh, point. And Sorg, I, I learned one other thing. Fake boobs get you championships. I'm sorry? Fake boobs get you championships. Drake Maverick. Oh, Drake Maverick. There you go. If I had to pick someone from TNA to be like one of the first to hold a single title mm -hmm. would not have picked drake maverick would have loved to dream it would not have picked it i learned that it's taken four months of us doing promos in front of a green screen for somebody to actually be creative with that uh concept boom this guy <laughs> right here you're welcome yeah, and you guys will see that next month sometime uh but uh sorry 
it's a little bit inside baseball, but that's what I learned. No, please put me over more. I, <laughs> I insist. <laughs> While we're at it, and let's put you over where you're going to be in the next several weeks. Ah, uh, that is what we call a segue. Time to get my stuff in. You will be able to see me at Rise on July 20th. That is at the Stronghold in Lamont, Furnace, Pennsylvania. You can go on the internet uh, at Rise underscore wrestling. Rise Wrestling on the Facebook, just search that, or just search BC Steel. I'm always posting about it's Rise, Rise with a Y. That is, yes, it is Rise with a Y. I'm a fan of Rise with an I, but yes. I work for Rise with a Y, not with the I, because if I worked for the I, I wouldn't work for the one with the Y, because Y is not I. Sorry, Kevin. And now, after I have confused many people on that, there will also be Stomp Out Cancer 3. It Yay! is probably the premier event in Pittsburgh of the year. Uh, we'll be Stomping Out Cancer for the third year. Yes. And it is August 16th, also at the Stronghold the in stomp- Lamont Furnace. The Stompening. The, yeah. The, it is uh, going to be better than the Mighty Ducks 3. There will be way less Gordon Bombay, unfortunately. Oh, good. Oh, good. Uh, I will uh, be performing it- the movie from start to finish, if anybody's interested. Um but, uh-huh. but can also, you make Luis Mendoza a better skater. You know what? Uh, I can. Uh, I'm also going to be uh, featuring Russ Tyler a lot more. Excellent. And there... can you also make Luis Mendoza not a girlfriend stealing douchebag that we have to cheer for? Well, you should see what he has done <laughs> I have after a lot the of movies. Thoughts about Luis Mendoza. Anyways, there are some big announcements for that show. Yes, actually, there are. Uh, Chase Owens from the Bullet Club will be there. We will have. ECW superstar or former ECW superstar Chris Hamrick will be there. Pittsburgh legend Boomer Payne. Guys from Chakar will be there. There are more surprises. I'm trying to uh, to get my sources in with the office to, to find out the details. Mm-hmm. I will be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is a uh, summer vacation theme. I will not be in swimming trunks. Sorry, ladies. Mm. But uh, there will be some uh, summer-related activities. <laughs> summer-related activities? Yes. Yes. We're actually going to uh, have a wave pool. Oh. And, uh, in the parking lot of the, uh, yes, of the, of the yes. cinema. We're going to be uh, tanning. We're, We're going to be drinking gonna, margaritas. We're going to flood one of the other theaters in the venues. <laughs> hey, why not? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, in all seriousness. And the, and the wave pool is just going to be like Bulk Nasty just waving his arms in the water. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But in all seriousness, it is probably, in my opinion, the best show of the Pittsburgh calendar year because you see guys together that you wouldn't oh, yeah. normally see. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, we just had a uh, uh, footage going up that you know, same guys that did the from the Ashes show with uh, uh, for Sean Phoenix, um, uh, helping them out. Those matches going up on our uh, indie wrestling.us YouTube and Facebook now. Um, there's some good stuff from that, and in and, and, uh, Fidian and Lee Moriarty, that was amazing. Wow, that that was the best match I've seen all year, yeah, easily, easily. Uh, really good stuff there. Um, so, uh, James and Chris LaRusso. Uh, Generation Dead, speaking of G Raver against uh, the Culmination, um, there's a Battle Royal. Uh, there are more matches coming out uh, uh, as soon as I can get to them. Uh, so those are up there and links to if you do want to support uh, that. Also, I believe all the matches from the first two Stomp Out Cancers are also on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, again, all with links to the American Cancer Society, which is the benefactor of these shows. So you guys can donate directly. Check out the action. And please come and support the uh, this one uh, if you're in the Pittsburgh area or through uh, means afterwards. So we'll be there capturing the action as the usual. So anything else? Hmm. Where are you? I, I may also be showing up at Fight Society. I make no promises or guarantees. I could literally show up anywhere. I mean, I, I'm sure there's places I haven't burned a bridge yet. I, I mean, there's got to be other places, sometimes, right? Sometimes you're in the audience of shows. That's true. Uh, when I'm not uh, desired to be there. And if you look at the shows from 1998, you'll see me in a lot of uh, those. <laughs> you'll see me with my haircut that I parted down the middle like I was trying to be one of the Backstreet Boys. Oh. And uh, yeah. Excellent. BC Steel, thank you. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. And, uh, and, and thank you, everybody. Uh, for joining us here on the live stream here, or if you caught us on podcasts or video form later, please tell your friends uh, to mayhem with us. Uh, thank you, Mad Mike. Thank you. Uh, YouTube.com slash poppy. Uh-huh. Matt Carlins of the uh-huh. mainstream variety. Uh, back to watch uh, the next Kazuna Road show. See you never again. <laughs> And, of course, producer Missy keeping us straight here as well. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, stay tuned. Indie Mayhem Show uh, will be uh, premiering everything that we recorded, including Brohemus, starting this week. Sorry I was going to start it last week, but I got kind of sick. 
Uh, so I just uh, uh, stayed in bed and watched Wrestle Rex on the live stream. Uh, so that's how that went. Uh, but that'll be coming out. Great interviews with him, uh, them. Uh, a great interview with Paul Atlas of Fight Society, as well as um, uh, Xander Gabriel, a newbie out of the IWC training school, uh, that will be featured on uh, Prospect Pro Wrestling here in two weeks, uh, as well. That will be up there filming too. Uh, so go check all those out. Check your feed. Make sure you subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show, the Wrestling Mayhem Show, Super Freak Get Out, oh, the Wrestling Kitchens. Uh, until next time, Mayhem out. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time, then attack. Don't give up what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time, then attack. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.